like that. So I can tell you a little bit about my talk because this is actually in the slides and I'm gonna skip those slides later. My talk is called GitHub Stars Won't Pay Your Rent. And just judging by the talk, uh, judging by the title of the talk, GitHub Stars Won't Pay Your Rent, you might think, um, oh, he's gonna tell us you should make money, you shouldn't do free stuff because open source doesn't pay enough. And you got them right, I'm gonna tell you that in the first part. I have an article written like this, GitHub Stars Won't Pay Your Rent. And that article was written by a more hopeful kid. Sir. This kid sir, back in 2019, I actually read the article recently and I'm like, I teared up. I was like, wow, I was so hopeful about startups and building and everything. So that talk, that um, um, article was full with enthusiasm and hope for the future. But this talk is gonna be divided in two parts. So I'm gonna encourage you to build paid things. I'm gonna encourage you to um, actually value the work that you're working, whether it's products, whether it's open source and whatever. And then for the second half of the talk, I'm gonna 100% discourage you from doing anything paid ever, for, from ever running a startup. So basically when you think about it, it's a 50-50 talk. And you can just go and grab lunch. Like <laughs> you're gonna be left with nothing by the end of the talk. Um, all right, <laughs> now I'm really out of things to say <laughs> before I get my slides. Uh, yeah, maybe I can just continue with my slides without slides. I always wanted to try giving an entire talk without slides. So maybe we'll have slides for, for the second part of the talk. This is amazing. <laughs> This is like classic developer, you know, works on my computer and then you plug it in and you're like, oh, oh nothing works. Maybe a round of applause for the organizers so we skip this awkward part of the, let's, let's do that. Wow, so many dongles here. <laughs> this is crazy, this is crazy. Puns? Okay, I can read puns, thank you very much. Dev jokes puns. This is gonna be horrible and you're gonna groan. How come nobody wanted to talk to the function? They were always looking for an argument. No applaud, D don't applaud these bad things. Una, they're bad. What, why did the programmer quit their job? Because they couldn't get a raise. A raise? A... And the third one, and we can start. The, la the last pun, come on, the puns were fun. How did the function get so wealthy? It got an inheritance. You should delete this note, <laughs> but thank you so much. Okay, and my dongle thing is connected, the clicker? It should be? Perfect, okay, so we skipped this one. Hi everybody, I'm Kitze. The only important link that you can find me at is dkitze. I'm from Macedonia, I actually live in Poland. I dislike all of these terms of people describing themselves and I just call myself just a rectangle mover because I believe in this industry, we over explain what we do. Like realistically, we just take a JSON and we paint some rectangles. So I even printed a shirt for myself that says just a rectangle mover. That's how I describe myself. Um, I'm working on too many things at once. Uh, I'm trying to do too many things. I was not sure if I have ADHD until I Googled ADHD test and I opened it in five tabs and in the middle of it I just dropped and Googled something else. So I have all of these things that I'm starting, not finishing, some of them important, some of them not important. I even disk web development in a rap song. But the most important thing I'm working on is Sizi. I'm curious, just so I, you know I'll feel bad, who here is using Sizi? Raise your hands. Okay. Y you work for Sizi, so you don't, you don't count. <laughs> and who here is using Redux? Really? Okay, that, that, that makes me hopeful. Like one, I thought everyone was gonna raise their hand, so this is great, so this is great. Uh, if you're using CZ or FFN, we have t-shirts, we have stickers for later. I always felt guilty for not doing a technical talk. Do you see that jumble mess or do you? Yes? Do you see that party? <laughs> Amazing, should I reconnect? Well, this cable is duct taped, just like my entire talk. So, <laughs> should I try to unplug it and plug it? This is going amazing so far. This is going amazing so far. So the organizer was like, you shouldn't go over 30 minutes. And I'm like, don't worry. But now we have all of this and I don't know what to do. She's probably pissed back there. Uh, Cause yeah, the cable is, this is amazing. Duct tape, duct tape cables. Well, I, I guess I can, oh God, this is a disaster. What do we do, <laughs> organizers? I'm, Musica, Musica. Huh? Just use Windows. Just <laughs> we should just use this. Okay, let's try to use this. Okay, click. Pretty nice. I think the duct tape HDMI is the one that. <laughs> I'll try to skip over some things and we'll still make it. Yeah, 
And my work, my laptop worked a couple of times today. Oh my god, this is amazing. I think it's the cable, it's the duct tape cable. Yeah. More puns. Una, where are you? I need your <laughs> I need your phone with the notes. No, I'm kidding, Will. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing is, like, I, I've been thinking about this talk for so long, like, I had it in my head, and now they, I just, one day I woke up at 4 a.m. and I just, the talk flew, like, I just wrote in a notebook everything that I want to say. So I can pretty much do it without slides, I can do it without showing the slides to you. It would be nicer if I show the slides, but if we don't fix this, I'll just do it without slides. Um, yeah, maybe we can just... Okay, so I'll just <laughs> I'll just start with the talk with no slides, and then we're gonna pick up from where we pick up. All right. So uh, as I said, the first uh, part of the talk is about open source and valuing your thing and how to make things monetize and and yada yada yada. So there are two types of people when it comes to solving problems. There's the type of person like you have my sister who like doesn't care about solving problems. Like she had two remotes, one for the DVD, one for the TV, and one of them was out of batteries. So for an entire year, she swapped batteries between the two remotes. And every time she needed to use it, she would just swap batteries. And, and back then we lived together and she was just hurting me, like, look, like solve it. And then you have me, who is the type of person who wants to solve everything. And I can tell you that in most, like in daily life and in software, it's great because you can build something great. But in most of my daily life, it's like exhausting. Like you see something, it's like, oh, that's a problem. I need to solve that. I need to solve that. So it's exhausting to think into, into, in, into problems all the time. Like I was cutting cherry tomatoes in the kitchen for like, 10 minutes, I'm like, there must be a better solution. These little fuckers, they're like splattering over your face. And I'm like, there, someone must have invented a solution for cutting cherry tomatoes. So I go on Google, I find cherry tomato slicer. It's literally, by the way, best thing that happened to me after our, our marriage. It, really, cherry tomato slicer <laughs> is the best thing ever. So I apply this same methodology, I apply this same thinking to software development, to everything that I invent. Everything I've ever built throughout my not very long career, let's say 10 years, has been with one and one reason only. Just solving my own problems. And it sounds a little bit selfish and it sounds a little bit stupid and people might be like, oh, but just solving your own problem is not enough and you need to do more and it's actually enough and it proved to be enough for me. Like, I, I, I didn't think more than just solving my own problem. For example, I have a website called uh, okgoogle.io. I'm sorry if I triggered all of your assistants and they're like, yes, what do you need from me? So this website, I just needed a website for myself to list all of the commands that, um, that a Google Assistant can do because I needed it for myself. There was no agenda. There was um, nothing. I had didn't have a master plan for this. So people were like, "Why are you wasting on your time making a list of Google commands? Like, who cares about this?" There was no master plan except like some grandma somewhere is gonna know how to properly set a timer for her spaghetti. That was the only benefit of the website. And suddenly, I got featured on TechCrunch, which is insane. Like, it's one of the biggest publications. They wrote about my website. And I was like, "What the fuck is happening?" Suddenly, I started getting followers. Like, this had like a snowball effect in my career, but I totally didn't plan it. And then, literally, everything that I've done from this moment on has been only about solving my own problems, solving my own problems, solving my own problems. So when I tell people this, a lot of people DM me or ask me in person like uh, about follower advice, about money advice, about startup, about, like how do I get this, how do I get that? And when I tell them just solve your own problems and good things will happen, like you can see in their face they're like, nah, there, there must be mo more to that, right? And I'm like, no, just instead of being money driven, instead of putting money as the goal, like I need to make X amount by next month or whatever, just be like, which problems do I have and try to solve those problems and good things will follow. Like this has always been my mentality. Like when people ask about followers, like how do you get to it? They have these metrics nowadays, like grow your Twitter and whatever. And the strategy could be as simple as, I think also gonna replace parts of my laptop by this point, they're gonna take out <laughs> the CPU and everything, it's amazing. So, uh, yeah, and the second problem here is when people find problems, like let's say you're one of the people that actually finds problems, like a cherry tomato slicer, you might think most of the time, oh, this is not worth solving. Like, who's gonna use a solution to this? Like, constantly we have this thought because you're thinking of your mom, you're thinking of your closest five friends, you're thinking of your Twitter bubble. So if you close your eyes and you imagine selling something right now, one of your things that's free, 90% of people here will think like, yeah, but no one is gonna buy that. No one else has that problem. So it's hard to think like this, like solve your own problems and trust me, there's someone else out there who has your problem too. Um, yeah, so let's say I solved all of these problems and I didn't know what I was doing with them. And the easiest thing to release a product, like when it comes to software, the easiest way to release a product was just making it open source. Like I think um, why most people launch something and they make it open source is because it's the easiest button to click. Like you literally you type a couple of commands, bam, it's live on GitHub. If you need to make a paid product, 
if you need to make a paid product, there's months of more work that you need to do. There's months of more like you need to have like the payment system set up and the customer portal and have to have customer support and you have to have all of these things before you make it paid. So when you're done with building something, you tweet it out like, hey, I'm done with building something. I'll just open source it. It's fine. So just like the cherry tomato example, just like the cutter, I was tired. I was super tired of resizing my browser. I was working for a client and the client was like, you need this responsive design to be perfect on all devices, you need to work perfect on all the devices. And I was doing that in Google Chrome, I would just switch a device and switch a device, switch a device five times. That's my limit. I'm like, nope, I'm inventing a browser. So back then it wasn't a browser, it was just a, like a shitty web app that displayed iframes. And I'm like, does anyone want this? And people on Twitter were like, oh yeah, we want this. We want a thing where you can see multiple devices at once. So I was like, cool, I'll continue building it. But honestly, I had no idea that it would turn into a startup. They, they took my laptop, I'm scared at this point. They're gonna drag me off of stage. So yeah, I didn't know what is gonna happen. I didn't know what is gonna snowball into, but it, it happened. And it just started as a simple web app for previewing multiple um, devices at, at once. So I just started with solving my own problem. And literally every feature that we've built into Sizi has been um, a bit selfish, but has been because of my frustrations as a web developer. I was like, I need to test multiple users in Google Chrome, in any other browser. I need to log out, log in, open incognito tab, open this, open that. I'm like, why don't we make it? Then in multiple devices, you can log in with different users. So now I can see my admin, my guest, and other users at the same screen. So literally, this is like a problem, uh, I have a problem-driven development, let's call it. Like, I was tired of killing a port. We make a little feature where you have UI, you type port 3000, and you kill the port. I was, of course, I was tired of course, get it? Of of course, it's an annoying thing in web development. So we made a toggle for toggling course off in, in, you know, when you're in development mode, so you can actually uh, wor work without all of those course issues. So this, uh, the entire development uh, of CZ for the last few years has been just a bit selfish, as I said. Kids has a problem as a web developer, let's put it as a solution. Because if you ask the users for feedback, they won't know what they need. Like they, they were fine with their browser, they were fine with CZ as it is. But the more stuff we invent, they're like, oh, I never knew I needed that. And at the moment, it seems like I'm solving it for myself, but I'm actually, um, solving it to, to other people. So yeah, as I said, everything is like um, open source. We publish it as open source. CZ was open source, so when we launched it, I didn't even think much about it. Bam, open source. So what surprised me, it's in a very short period when we open sourced it, it was like 5,000 stars. It was like tens of thousands of users in showing up in Google Analytics. The Chrome extension was one in the most popular ones in the developer category. And you might think like, oh, with all of these metrics, like we were, number one on Product Hunt for the month, for the week. We beat Raspberry Pi on Product Hunt, which is a tiny computer. Isn't that bananas or raspberries? Sorry. Um, it's, it's crazy. So you might think with all of these metrics, oh, probably your open source app made a lot of money, right? So I want you to give me a little drum roll on your knees, and I'll tell you how much it made in two years. Just make the drum roll. You made the wave. Come on, you can make a drum roll. <laughs> so in two years, as an open source product, Sizi made $92. <laughs> which is really fucking sad because you think, but on, on the other hand, you might think like that might not make sense, but the, on the other hand, it makes perfect sense that it made $92. Because open source, you give people something for free, right? Like imagine you go at the airport, some, you're hungry, someone gives you a sandwich. Most people won't be like, no, 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 sir. Let me just pay for that. Let me pay $30. They'll be like, oh, a fucking sandwich, amazing. Most people will act like that. And open source is like, there you go, right? And people are like, yeah, well, cool. I got it for free. Do you know those pay what you want sliders on websites? Like you have a software or a book or whatever and it has a slider, pay what you want. I think if you drag that to the right side, a bunch of dust gonna pop out because nobody has ever dragged it to the right side. Like you're trying to pull it to the one, like I wanna pay $1, why doesn't it go to zero? I don't wanna pay anything. No one has ever paid more than $1 on those pay what you want sliders. So when you think about it, it actually makes sense that you, know, you give something out for free and it doesn't make a lot of money. It would be really nice to have the slides for the second part. Um, <laughs> He took my laptop hostage. I'm gonna get some water. Thank you, thank you. So the problem is that's not enough. Like we open sourced it, I kind of forgot about it. I was like, yeah, let's just let this product live. I was doing workshops at the time, so I didn't need. Uh, hey, there it is. I, <laughs> I don't know where to. <laughs> oh, we have another, what is that? A remote, a clicker, a thing? I actually wanted to improvise the entire talk. God damn it, now I have to look at my slides. <laughs> yeah, so I had these quick, five quick technical talks just to break the tension in the beginning. So I'm, I really wanted to do these slides, so I'm gonna do them. I was guilty for doing this like 
type of talk and everyone's gonna talk about technical things. So I have five quick technical talks for you. First one, how to build an Electron browser from scratch using Electron, Next.js, and Mobix State 3. Don't, your mental health will thank you. Thank you for attending. Next one, the missing explanation for React use effect. It's still missing. Thank you for attending. I mean, they're trying, but you know. Next one is called what's new and exciting in React. Nothing, unless you're the Facebook team. And the last one is practical use cases for Web3. Thank you for attending. OK, we can move on now. I can skip to my slides. I can skip to all the things, the grandma, the spaghetti. Uh, most things are a problem. This, this is amazing. You have to buy this thing. <laughs> my wife hates it. Uh, yeah, so this is a bunch of sissy stuff. And yeah, this is the classical dilemma, the like classic Shakespearean dilemma to open source, not to open source. And we got all of this, we made $92, let's just get to the point. I mean, now my open source, it makes, I make $1 for my one GitHub sponsor, but it makes sense because if you read this readme, you'll be like, oh, it makes sense that he's making $1 from, from his open source. Now it makes sense. But back then it didn't, because I actually cared. I'll leave this here. So, yeah, a few years went by, and as I said, uh, I was doing uh, workshops, and I was busy with not building websites. So um, I didn't need a browser to work in. But later, I, start, I wanted to build websites again. And just like the freaking example with the cherry tomato slicer, when I think that something can be solved in a different way, there's no way I'm going to the other way. Like, CZ was a shitty web app, and it was definitely far from a proper browser. But I just knew there's the potential of opening localhost in something special, like, like movie makers have their own software and audio people have their own software and VFX artists, everyone has software, but we keep opening localhost 3000 next to tabs which are YouTube, TikTok, Gmail, whatever. And just that I had that thought, there has to be something. I was like, I'm gonna drop everything that I do and we're gonna make this a proper browser. It's not gonna be just some open source thing. So I got a DM from, from Praneet, the, the first guy who, who joined me actually in building this. He wanted some money advice and whatever. I have, I have some money advice. Let's start working together and let's just do this thing. Um, perfect storm happened. I tried to pay with GitHub stars on a website, but the option was not there. There was Apple Pay, Google Pay, but there was no pay with GitHub stars. And then my landlord just came by and wanted money for the rent. And he said, GitHub stars can't pay your rent. And this is like the moment in a movie, like hot top time machine. He said the name of the, of the thing. Anyway, so a perfect storm happened. And we had the classical Shakespearean dilemma, like to close source an open source app and make it paid or not to close it. Like it, it, it's, a, it's a really hard decision to have so many users and just to close the app for them. But we decided to do it. Before we decided to do it, we had some issues. Like nobody else has my problem. Who's going to pay for this? And the sad thing is we had all the validation. This was not a new product. We had the metrics, analytics, upvotes, likes. People wanted this and I still had this hesitation. Like, Who's gonna pay for this though? Like they're using it, we saw it in the metrics and we still had like, who is going to pay for this? And this is because when we think of making something paid, we think about, about our own bubble and not the world. Like we don't think that some, like we think, oh, will my 15 Twitter buddies buy this and use this? We don't think about the world. So the first time we got a purchase from Japan, I was like, I don't know anyone there. <laughs> I don't have Twitter friends there. It's amazing. It was like, mind blowing to do that. Then we had the problem of choosing a price. I really wanted like really idi idiotic thinking on my side. I really still want this to make CZ the most accessible thing that everyone can afford it and yada, yada, yada. But it was the wrong type of thinking because I thought if we just price it as low as possible, every developer ever, ever will use it. So we priced it at, at $5, which is ridiculous. Like investors who are looking at it, people, people are asking, is that the price? Yes, is that the real price? Wait, you're not kidding, it's like $5? So you had that camp and you had like, no, I'm not paying for it camp. So two different camps. And now we learn from this and we double the prices. We even like we more than double the prices. And we have exactly the same sales, which is mind blowing. So we realize that people either get it and people don't get it. There's no in between. For people who get it, they go to the landing page, they download the trial and they're like, um, oh, this is amazing. This is gonna save me so much time. Bam, I'll buy it. Doesn't matter how much money it is. And then you have people, no matter how low you price it, you can make it $1, you can make it 50 cents, you can make it anything. They, even if you give them to free for free, if they don't get the problem that you're solving, they'll be like, no, nah, I just don't, don't need this. So, of course, we closed source it and this was the reaction. Everyone was complaining. Everyone was like, I'm gonna make my own. I'm gonna make it for free. This is ridiculous. Paying for desktop apps. This never happened in the history of anything. Isn't this literally Google Chrome? Isn't this literally a Google Chrome extension? Like, why would, like, there was a lot of pushback, but in the real world scenario, just imagine someone going to the supermarket and is like, I can buy my own cow. I can make my own milk. And the, the cashier will be like, oh, oh, do that? 
Because only on the internet we can have these types of complaints when someone just yells at you, you know, for something. Then we launched, it was freaking amazing. So this was the one amazing part of having a startup. We were like partying, I had my smart lights at home turn green. Every time there was a purchase, there was like a ka on the speakers. It got annoying, it started being like a disco after a while. I'm happy to say that because actually a lot of people bought and converted. And for a while we, we rode that ride and it was freaking amazing. It was the best feeling ever to get money, to do everything. Like my, my, my wife quit her job at Amazon, he joined CZ, she joined CZ full time. And yeah, she got all of the merch, she got too excited. Now we look like Sissy vomited on us, literally. And yeah, working with your wife is pretty interesting, but mixing personal, private, everything. Let's just say that when the word reproduction steps mean two wildly different things, it, it, gets, it gets weird. So that's for another talk, but yeah, I love working with my, with my wife. So until here, until this part of the talk, you're like, oh, fuck yeah, you're opening your phone, you're closing your GitHub repos, you're texting your boss like, fuck you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on my own things, I wanna build my own startup, you're opening Tinder, you're finding a wife, she's gonna make merch, like, you have all of this dream, right? But from this moment on, from the talk, you're gonna be like this, you're like, oh, fuck, now for fuck's sake. This part two is called fuck having a startup. So there are many reasons for this, but we're gonna start with the basics. I have 11 minutes left, fun. Uh, I tweeted this recently that most engineers actually make more money than people who have startups, than the average startup founder. So I didn't say Dylan from Figma who made 20 billion. I didn't say unicorn startups and everything else. I said the average founder, because the average founder is someone that after three years, they're gonna tweet something like this. But you fall for the emoji, you fall for the hype. Like after three years, we're making $500 per month and you're like, oh, this would be, but McDonald's is hiring for more money than that, like it's ridiculous. And people fall for the hype. They're like, ooh, I would like to have my own thing. I would like to, to be my own boss. And the replies to this, to, to my tweet was like, it's about ownership, doing things your way, not wasting hours per week on scrum meetings. Do you think there's no scrum meetings and meetings in when you have a startup? It's like the same shit. Someone is like, uh, they put more effort for less money just because they believe they put a dent in the world. The only dent was in my head from reading Electron documentation and C++ and things in Russian to understand how to do something in CZ. And we have this reply, uh, why, why wouldn't you act on your own ideas? Hmm. Because acting on your own ideas and coding your own idea doesn't automatically mean money. It doesn't mean you can actually live from it. So eventually you can, yeah, you can screw around and code on an idea, doesn't mean it's gonna turn into your livelihood. And my favorite reply, my favorite reply, the most ridiculous myth that people believe is, in is it's nice being able to do what you want. This is hilarious. If you think that when you have your own thing, you will do what you want, it's hilarious. So this is what I deal with. This is an email that arrived recently. Is this what I want? Like just straight up caps lock, no subject, nothing. It, this is like saying fuck you for making something paid. Do you think I wanna deal with this? So this is the shittiest graphic ever, but like when you get to the launch and everything is exciting, Inev inevitably it's gonna happen the second part where the fun dies down. It's not fun, it's not doing what you want. I have even a shittier graphic. I don't know why it's this here, but it's 90% not, uh, not, I just wanted to have a pie chart. So every job, you have to realize that every job has the job part that, that sucks. It, anything that looks glamorous is just like, it has the part that's an actual job. Another thing we have is, I'm thankful for every customer we have. Like if you're a customer, if you spend a dollar, I'm super thankful, but they're a, a giant pain in the ass to deal with on a daily basis. They'll always send any. You can, you can put an FAQ, you can put a most informative landing page, docs, help center, whatever you put, they'll always send an email. Recently, we revamped our landing page. We removed the email by mistake. There's no email, you cannot find the email. Someone sent this. FYI, you don't have an email on your, I'm like, how did you fucking find it? Did you guess it letter by letter? Like, how did you find it? Like, we have all of these requests. Like, constantly you have to deal with all of this. Like, it's exhausting. Like, people want discounts. Like, in the first year, we had too many discounts and people were like, uh, signing up with a coupon, getting a discount, emailing us, can I stack a discount on top of another discount? And I'm like, at this point, I have to pay you to use my app. Like you're using it for free, it's crazy. Thanks to my wife for actually being polite and doing the customer support because I cannot do the customer support. Like if I had to deal with all of these people, like this would be my replies. I just, I can't deal. Like it's there in the settings. Just click around for fuck's sake. So yeah, next, next thing we have is fuck marketing. This is what Gen Z Shakespeare said. Like, it feels as a developer, like even doing this talk, this talk is not about CZ. Like I wish I could tell you this talk without talking about CZ because I feel like, ugh, I'm marketing on my own thing. I didn't even wear the t-shirt. I, I wore my rectangle uh, mover t-shirt. So fuck marketing, but especially fuck marketing. You, I'm sorry, but you're the most pain in the ass audience to deal with when selling anything. Like next time I do a product, it's gonna target everyone, it's gonna target animals, it's gonna target snails, lizards, everyone. Not developers, like they, they, they are exhausting. They're like, Oh, thank you, I guess. 
They're like, oh, I can build this by myself. Oh, I can just build this by myself. Oh, I don't need this. Like, even when you give them stuff that's going to solve things, like GitHub Copilot. Like, I don't need GitHub Copilot. I'll murder that thing. I'll use the blood to write my code letter by letter. I don't need your help. So worst audience ever to sell to. Then we have hiring sucks for an obvious reason, money. When you're bootstrapped, you need money to hire all of these rock star people. But also doing interviews, because no one's going to do interviews for you. You have to do interviews. Doing what you want is magical. It's do what you want, right? You have to do interviews. And I have people, like, I hop on a call, this new generation of people who are like, I don't care what I wear. I don't care what I, how I talk. I don't care about my microphone. They don't care about anything. So I start a call, and the guy's like, let me just finish my cigarette on my balcony. And I'm, I'm like, okay, I can listen to the buses and the cars passing. Like, I interviewed a woman. She was in a cafe, no microphone, nothing. Like, I could hear, but the player's going to play, play. Because I could hear the music from the thing. I couldn't hear what she's saying. I'm like, I like to interview, but another person I interviewed, just in the middle of it, started, yeah, but what do you think about COVID? And I'm like, how do you think you're going to get the job if you start talking about COVID? Like, it doesn't work that way. And then I had this person, this is my favorite example. I start the call. I can see some blurry things happening. Like, I cannot see if it's a person. Like, there, there's nothing. It's like, are they in a basement? Like, what the hell is going on? And then from a microphone, I hear like, and I'm like, I would like to interview, but I want to call 911. Like, are you kidnapped? Like, what the hell is happening here? Like, doing all of these interviews is exhausting and it sucks. So, yeah, I have more things to drone on about meetings. We all agree about meetings, right? Like, all of these things, you have to do them. And as a developer, you only wanted to develop. You didn't want to do any of these things. So people are like, why don't you hire someone magically to do everything for you, right? In this fucking economy, you're going to hire someone? Do you see what's happening? Like, it's hard to hire someone. And the big reason is money. Like, when you're bootstrapped, you have to choose. Like, what are you going to spend your money on? So, also classic Shakespearean dilemma. Drink water. And I decided not to raise money. Like, I, I was humbled that a lot of investors approached and they were like, hey, we can help you with this and that. But they needed me to focus, which I can't. I want to work on 15 million things at once, not one. And I don't want to lose control. Because I'm afraid that when investors get all, all over Sizi, it's going to look something like this. And I really don't want this. Like, this is a product that I've built for three years. And even if we have zero users tomorrow, I would still build it for myself. So I don't want to give the control to someone who's going to make it monetize or, or, or whatever the hell. So you're like, oh, it must be nice to keep the control, right? So you're the boss and, and whatever. So it must be nice not to have investors and everything. And no, it is not because this is exhausting. This is very, very exhausting. I was dreaming for my entire career of an empty calendar. I was like, if only I quit my job. And then I quit my job, less calendar events. If only I quit freelancing, less calendar events. But then I was faced with an empty calendar. And and this is like, I thought like the next step will set me free. When there's an empty calendar, it's going to be fine and everything's going to be fine. But the pros, when you're faced with that empty calendar, now you have to do all the things. Like the pros are planning your own time, making your decisions, planning your own tasks. But the cons are planning your own time, making your decisions, and doing your own tasks. Because this is exhausting. Like sometimes you wish someone will just throw something at you. Like I would wait, like if someone gives me a daily CSS puzzle to solve, and at 5 p.m. I go home and I watch mother of dragons thrones whatever that prequel is like it would be freaking amazing like all the worries i can just get a new job there's no worries you're just going home daily puzzle done and no worries at all like i would i would kill for that like we as society, I cannot believe I use the word society, we as people, whatever, uh, we're obsessed with this, to be the boss, to be the CEO, to be the best, to be whatever, we're obsessed, one day I'm going to quit my job, there's going to be trumpets and orchestra, I want to tell my boss who's the boss, like, we think there's only working for someone or working for yourself, there's no middle ground here, so... If you don't like working for someone, there's other options. You can work for way too many people. Like now you can change jobs, it can be remote, it can be here, it can be there. Like there's too many variants, like how you can build your things without quitting your job and just working for yourself. There's a lot of like uh, in the middle there because you'll always be working for, some for someone. I thought like having my own startup, I'll never work for anyone else, but now I'm working for my customers, literally. I'm working for, for the people who work for me. I have like two people and then my wife is full-time employed, but I have all the burden and I have to work for these people. I cannot be like, oh, I'm just chilling right now. So you'll be working either for a boss will be working for the customers and your employees and everyone else because everything seems more glamorous when you look at it from the outside right these nomads working on a laptop near a pool but you don't see the fat kid like playing marco polo and just splashing on his laptop and he's like oh fuck to go inside everything from the from the outside just seems like super glamorous hiring people this is not just okay let's say i hired two people and it's not just hey here you go you have tasks now and you do the task. You have to think about their career. You have to think about their growth. You have to think about way too many things. Like you take this huge responsibility. Even though these people can change their job like this, you feel responsible for having these people. So that's also exhausting. Doing what you want, right? It's a dream. People on Twitter were like, you, you will do whatever you want. I don't want to do any of this. So some days it feels like with every new hire, uh, that's what's generated by AI. It's pretty depressing. Um, 
with every new hire, with every new person, with every new customer, I feel like I'm building this prison and the prison walls are just getting higher and higher and higher. And there's just like no easy exit out of this. And someone tweeted this and prisons are better. They're kind of better than this. Like you don't have the, the free time in your buddies and whatever. You just have to like, I hired this uh, Zico right there recently. He joined my company full time. And because of him, I almost got hit by a bus. So let me explain. It, he was not a bus driver. He wasn't like, fuck Electron, I'll kill you. It, it was just like, I was so stressed. Like I added one more responsibility in my life. So for the first time ever in these three years, I started sleeping less. I started waking up at four, at five, at six, just, just stress. So like woke me up. I was working on this talk at 4 a.m. just to get to my job, just to make sure I'm on Slack, I'm on the meeting. I, I wanted to juggle too many, too many things at once. And I, was, I didn't have enough sleep. I was driving in my car. I looked in the intersection on the left. Then I looked to the right and I see this bus like coming at me and I just stepped on the gas and I hopped. But as soon as I got to the office, like I broke down, I started crying. I called my wife. I'm like, why, why did I build this prison for myself? Like, why did I build this life for myself? I never wanted this. I never wanted a startup. I never wanted to play a boss, a startup or whatever. I just wanted a browser for developers so I can develop my ideas further. So I have all of these ideas that I'm obsessing with in my head. And now I'm suddenly stuck because this just happens for three years building this, this thing, which, which I never wanted. Um, I don't wanna say that on some days I just wanna quit, on most days, like I'm dancing on this thin line of saying like, fuck everything, I'm out, I cannot do this thing. But it feels unfair, it feels unfair to the employees, it feels un unfair to the customers, it feels unfair to myself because I would, I I would need this thing. It, it, it just, on most days, just it feels like impossible. Uh, to quit. I want to escape and just build something else. This is a constant thing. I'm like, oh, if we go and build something else, if we just go and start building something else, because I have this hope. There's this hopeful part of building a product where everything is hyped and the launch and everything, because I'm tricked that that new product won't have this line. I just want to work on the fun stuff, but every new product, everything else that I'll build will just have this, uh, have this line. And yeah, there, it doesn't make sense. We got pretty serious, huh? You thought it's gonna be easy peasy. Oh, I have my own startup. I'll make money. I'll buy a Tesla. No, it's it, it's not that easy. <laughs> it it doesn't work like that. Like about that image. What a lot of people. Yeah, the classic founder in a Tesla story, like making a financial decision for a depreciating asset. Very fucking smart. Pretty fucking stupid, if you ask me. But this is a classic thing that people want. What people don't want, uh, don't see that during that period when I got the car, which is like one of my things that I bought. Let's say. I was in the most depressed period for the first time ever I started getting panic attacks, anxiety attacks. It was like a mental wreck with the startup and with COVID and with everything. But people just see that. I hate this saying. This is the dumbest saying ever. When people are like, I would rather cry in a Ferrari. No, I would just smile in an Uber. Like this is really, really, really the dumbest thing. If you haven't been that low, you don't know and you're like, oh, but it's nice to be a founder. It's nice to have all of these things. It's just, it's just people think there's, oh, there's the next level. I can achieve this. And if only I go, I heard on a podcast that some guy who was 20 something bought an island. An island, not an iPhone. And he said there's nothing there. That's emptiness. It's, it just doesn't fill you with anything. And I believe that more, like, well, these financial things and material things will never ever bring you that happiness because it's mostly internal. I want uh, to conclude, I have two slides left and I hope the, the uh, organizer won't kick me out because I see the timer. Um, we need to normalize from going that, being your own boss and being a CEO and having the mug and running, running shit. We need to normalize it's fine being number two. Number two is the shit. Get in? Okay, sorry. Uh, number two, number three, number five. Being a number 175 in a company would be better if you feel fine, if you are happy, if you're doing the things you love. Basically, you can do the things you love in any position in a company. It can be a side project, an outside project. You can find different ways, but people just shoot to the top and they're like, if only I get there, then it's gonna be fine, which is a complete myth and a mystery. Last slide. This is a pretty Dalai Lama way to, to end the talk. It's annoying, I know. You hate all of these cheesy quotes, but this is the conclusion. Happiness is a mindset. There's no, if I free my calendar, if I freelance, if I increase my salary, if I do this, if I find my own thing, if, I, if only I get to the, no. You, where you're at right now, you can change to the next thing, but it's just a mindset. It's not a place where, where you can get to. And the final thing is, I was telling about all of this to Ken C. Dawes during dinner. I was telling about my startup struggles and whatever, and he just asked me this. And I just started staring at the table. <laughs> and for a few seconds, like, hello, darkness, my old friend, started playing in my head. And he gave me a little bit of existential crisis and I don't know how to answer this question. So thank you very much for, for listening to this talk. I really appreciate it. And sorry for messing up with the laptop. Um, you can scan the QR code and I would like to take a selfie with you if that's fine. So with this part of the audience maybe. Thank you. Thanks.